All right. My name is Marcia, and I'm a garbologist. I have spent the last 10 years immersed in waste, literally up to my neck at times. I've lived and blogged about living zero waste. I've dissected load upon load of garbage. If I had to guess, I'd say probably 80 dump truck loads full. I've created a number of recycling directories. And in my spare time, I do things like organize a repair cafe where volunteers help people fix broken household items like toasters and lamps and vacuum cleaners for free. Waste is a global issue. It's filling up our oceans, our landfills. It's contributing to climate change. And in a world where resources are finite, we can't keep taking, making, and disposing. Eventually, we're going to run out of resources. And I'd like my children to have some, and their children. We each have the power to solve this global problem with how we interact with and consume resources on a day-to-day -day basis. Stand up if you bought something today or yesterday. Go ahead, stand up. I can't see you very well, but... <laughs> you can sit down if you completely consume that item, packaging and everything. See, most of us are still standing, and that's because every single one of us consumes resources over and over, several times over in a day. You can sit down, thank you. <laughs> Contributing to this global phenomenon. We each have the power to solve this problem with how we interact with and consume resources in our daily lives. 2.1 billion tons globally is what we produce collectively. Can you imagine what this looks like? Is it any different to 2.1 million tons? There was an artist by the name of Chris Jordan who's done a series of images called Running the Numbers. And this is an image called Return of the Dinosaurs. And it depicts 240,000 plastic bags and as you consume, uh, zoom in, you can see that it's equal to the number of plastic bags consumed around the world every 10 seconds. That's a big number. <laughs> this is a picture of me. It was taken as part of a, an environmental communications master's thesis by a photographer by the name of Ilya Herb. It was a part of a series of images called layers that depicted people with strong connections to environmental issues. Ilya had heard my story in a CBC radio interview about my family's journey to zero waste and asked if I would take part in his project. Naturally, I agreed. <clears throat> you see, eight years ago, my family and I decided to see if we could live without producing any garbage. At the time, or, sorry, I had been inspired by a, a documentary film called The Clean Bin Project, where a Vancouver couple had gone for a whole year without producing any garbage. And at the time, I was working on a contract for the regional district, doing what's called a waste composition study. I had spent three months at regional landfills and transfer stations, dissecting load after load of garbage, sorting it into categories, measuring it, and analyzing it. And this study was a real eye-opener for me because I got to see firsthand how wasteful society is, how many resources were going into our landfills day after day that could be recycled or composted or even used again. So I wanted to show people that it was possible to produce very little garbage. I sent my story out to the media and they picked it up. I became a local waste celebrity. This is a picture of my daughter 
holding up the bag of garbage that our family of three at the time had produced in an eight-month period. What I learned over these eight months is that it takes quite a bit of effort in planning to generate this level of garbage. I had to bring my own containers, grocery shopping. I couldn't buy certain foods that I really liked because the packaging couldn't be recycled. We also didn't buy anything new. If we needed something, we bought it secondhand. This part of the project was easy. I didn't miss shopping. It just meant I had more time to spend with my family and more money in our bank account. We don't live zero waste anymore, but we generate very little garbage. And I have spent the last 10 years of my life helping others minimize and better manage their resources so that someday, zero waste isn't just a philosophy. One of the ways I help others is through waste audits and waste management planning. How much waste does XYZ generate and what's inside it? Because understanding a problem is the best way to solve it. I've been auditing TRU's trash since 2015. We've been tracking how much waste is generated and how much waste is diverted through composting and recycling. And wow, TRU diverts a lot of waste. It's not easy, I'm sure. <clears throat> and once, we've also looked at what people are throwing away. We take samples from waste stations, from offices, from the washrooms. We look at what the trades is throwing away, what they're throwing away in animal health technology. That's not my favorite one. Lots of poo. <laughs> and we take all this information and, and give it back to TRU, along with a series of recommendations and ideas on, on how they can reduce and divert materials. And every year, TRU takes some of these ideas and implements them on their path of becoming a zero waste campus. So once we see what's in the trash, we can start to formulate, well, how can, we, how can we reduce this? How can we get rid of some of this garbage? Any guesses what the most abundant material in TRU's way stations is? Coffee cups. Coffee cups. Food. Food. That's right. <laughs> Paper. Most of that goes in the recycling bins. Food waste. An estimated 1,200 kilograms of food waste is, is um, landfilled every week on campus. That's like uh, 44,000 kilograms a year, or about eight garbage trucks full of half-eaten sandwiches, french fries, sushi, ro sushi rolls, pork loins. So food waste is a huge opportunity. About 63% of household food is wasted every single year. So wasted food is wasted money. And who doesn't want some more money in their pocket? They say avoidable food waste costs an average Canadian household $1,100 a year. That's like t throwing $20 in the garbage every single week. so how can we avoid, uh, reduce our food waste? There's lots of things we can do. We can shop our fridge first. We can do things like meal planning and um, only buying what we know that we're going to eat in the week ahead. We can get creative with our leftovers by making soups, stews, and smoothies. And we can befriend our freezer. Once I began to learn how big of an issue food waste is, I started doing research. And there's many tools out there, resources out there, to help you reduce your food waste. Uh, one of the sites I use is called Love Food, Hate Waste. And Just Eat It, the food waste documentary, has a lot of great resources. But not wasting food doesn't just happen. You have to make a conscious effort to do it. So if you don't like eating leftovers, cook smaller portions. And if you find you're throwing a half a muffin in the garbage every, every day, maybe start to carry a container around with you and save it for later when you're hungry. But it all boils down to a simple message, and that is, just eat it. You bought it. <laughs> the second way I think we can all have a uh, reduce our 
impact on the world's resources is by reducing our use of single-use disposable items. I get it, we live in a world of convenience and we're all very busy people, but these items are, if we start to think of these items as resources, resources that we're only using for, for minutes, sometimes even seconds, and all the energy that goes into making those resources, and then we just throw them away thoughtlessly, carelessly into the garbage, and they're there forever. We've, and we've lost all of those resources and all that energy that went into making those products for two seconds of carrying my bags to the, into the house. The, the good news is, for every disposable product on their market, there's a reusable option. So get in the habit of, of carry, bringing a, a mug, bag, or, sh or um, container with you. Do like the sustainable Kamloops Eco Owl says, and just bring it. <laughs> bring your own bag or mug or water bottle when you're out and about, because those small actions do have a, a big impact. And finally, I think we need to do what our kindergarten teachers taught us. In kindergarten, we share. We share everything. Did you know that the self-storage industry in the United States last year brought in $30 billion? That's almost as much as the film industry at $43 billion. They say the, the stuff that we own but don't use is just as wasteful as throwing it away. But luckily, there are entrepreneurs who are cluing into the fact that we are getting bogged down with stuff. And they're developing ways for us to share things. There's online renting platforms. There's uh, tool libraries and thingeries where you can borrow uh, and share stuff with your neighbors in your ne neighborhood. And there's apps and social media. The other day, I accidentally bought a, a bag of oat grots. Does anybody know what oat grots are? <laughs> They're not oat flakes. <laughs> and they don't make good porridge. <laughs> so I sent a message out to my network, and lo and behold, you wouldn't believe it, but somebody had an oat flaker that I could borrow. And borrowing makes a lot of sense for things like that you don't use very often, like barbecues, or uh, sorry, sporting equipment and specialized tools and um, like drones and things like that. So learn about some of those networks out there where you can share, because there's a lot of positive interactions that go around sharing. It feels good to share. People like to give help other people and. In doing so, you're creating a, a stronger community and lightening our impact on the world's resources. 2.1 billion to zero is a long ways to go, but I think if we all start to take one step towards that goal, one action, if we start to like committing to eating the foods that we buy or bringing our own bags when we go grocery shopping, or sharing more. Collectively, our, all those steps have a big impact. So I will just leave you with this quote from a, the Chinese philosopher. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So I hope that every one of us in this room and every one of out, out there watching on, on TED Talks Global thinks of those one steps that they can take and just keep taking another step once you get it, because it does, it feels good, and our planet needs those steps. Thank you. <laughs>